something out. Uh, mm. I know everybody works very hard, and it's not easy to start again at 7 o'clock in the evening. So we're going to get straight to the point and get on with it. Uh, I just want to make a, a quick thank you to the Department of Education in Nevada, and specifically Dr. Gable Rubio, who has very kindly helped us uh, and donated the use of this Adobe Connect to this project, this uh, Art and Ed project. So thank you very much to them. Um, my name is Joel Josephson. I'm from the UK, in case you didn't guess already. I'm sure you did. And uh, fortunately for you lot, I'm not going to be saying a lot here. Uh, I'm actually going to be handing it over to my partner, Teresa, who's actually a specialist in music and education. And I think she's even got a surprise where she's living as well. So, Teresa, over to you, and uh, enjoy what we have to say, I hope. Thank you very much, Joel. Well, good evening, and thank you for uh, attending the webinar presentation of uh, our project, Art in Ed, Art in Education. And uh, yes, I'm Teresa, Teresa Dello Monaco, from the Mosaic Art and Sound in London, an adult education provider in London. And I'm not in London in this moment, but uh, yes, usually I am. <laughs> right, so uh, we can start with, uh, with our presentation. Um, Artined is a project dedicated to children and teachers and all those interested in the arts and how, how the arts can help um, teaching curricular subjects because uh, the main point uh, about Artinet is that actually um, we uh, are not just providing um, more proficiency in art education. <clears throat> we need it, of course, in all European school system, we need more art, introducing more art in school. But it is not just to have more art as a separate subject, but using in, in the best way, uh, arts to teach curricular subjects, so integrate it into the curriculum. That is basically uh, the, the most important aspect, uh, innovative aspect of, the, of art in education, art in art, art project. And our project is, um, is creating a methodology is creating um, a, an innovative methodology, actually different, various methodologies, because we have different art forms with uh, which we're working. And uh, uh, this is to add the arts and creativity into primary schools through the arts as a key component to every school subject. So just a few words about understanding why art are so important. The best art integration programs demonstrate that the strategy is a strategy that can help close the achievement gap and make schools happier places. It is a strategy within reach of most schools and districts, even those in the poorest communities. So we don't need uh, uh, funds. Uh, we don't need uh, so much elements and tools to introduce uh, arts in schools. We just need to be prepared to share, to share this uh, method, methodology, so we can use it also in the poorest districts in, uh, in many, many areas. The track record for arts integration as a tool for academic gain continues to strengthen during the last decades as more teachers use motivation and communication powers of the arts, reports of increased concentration, more cooperation, better comprehension, and greater self-esteem among students are increasing. In art-based schools, it became apparent that what it wasn't, well, actually, it wasn't that students couldn't learn it was that they wouldn't, simply like that. The arts make students want to learn. What's more, students become more resilient to setbacks when they have the opportunity to learn through art-based inquiry lessons that emphasize experimentation and learning from mistakes. The arts 
have inherent merits, such as ability to compel interest, induce empathy, and give new perspectives. These and many of the other important influences of the arts are not easily measured in standardized testing format. This is an issue, actually, because artistic process resists standardization. A good point, though, is that uh, which is easily measured may not matter. And what matters is not easy to measure. That said, we also know that a growing body of work compares results across multiple studies, and dozens of studies are finding the same thing. Significant art involvement changes how children think and how they feel about learning. That fact is reflected in test scores and in a vast quantities of survey, interview, observation, and anecdotal evidence. Now, we know that uh, uh, there's uh, many connection uh, about neurosciences and the arts, and there are interesting, um, interesting points that we can uh, think about and about our uh, constitution, how we are. So we know, for instance, that at birth, the brain has uh, 100 billion neurons which in turn make more than 50 trillion synapses. In early childhood, neurons begin to hook up according to sensory inputs. That's very important because this is where the arts come in. A child's environment alters both the numbers and complexity of brain synapses. There is no pre-programmed unfolding. It is also, also very interesting to notice that studies show that brain development is inhibited by restricted physical ability, physical movement, physical activity. Arts integration creates a highly stimulating learning environment featuring art materials, tools, and strategy to increase the possibility for sensory inputs. So in art integration, it is common for students to work in groups and to be out of their seats. Drama and dance allow students to move and learn kinesthetically. That's a very important point because we need that our children will move. They don't have to be sitting all the time because this can even uh, inhibit their brain development. And through the arts, we can have these uh, movements, body movements, with drama, with dancing. Education through the arts embraces the concept that the limit of language is not the limit of thinking. So brain changes are most extensive and powerful when emotion is part of learning. That chemical that we have with emotions modify our synapses in the brain. So we have new patterns, new synapses, new patterns, new knowledge, expanded knowledge. Modification of synapses is the very root of learning. Connection may not occur at all if the emotion, chemicals, and structures in the brain are not engaged. That's a very important part, actually. The arts are the most important tool a teacher has to engage the emotions. Engaging the emotions means making the brain develop as well. So producing arts changes the brain. Art integration includes dramatic play, movement exploration, and experimentation with art materials. These all have the potential to alter brain chemistry. Gardner's multiple intelligence theory presents the arts as distinct modes of thinking that fall under the umbrella of intelligence. Four of the Gardner's intelligences are art domains. So we have verbal, visual, spatial, musical, body, kinesthetic, dance, drama. And this is 
an essential point actually. So we have that arts creates a highly stimulating learning environment. Students work in groups and move around the classroom. Drama and dance allow kinesthetically learning. Emotion becomes an important part of learning. And we have these art forms in the art domains, which are also Gardner's intelligences, listed in intelligences verbal, visual, musical, body. What about teachers? Teachers work more collaboratively and are more creative, artistic and enthusiastic. They think more deeply and are more open to be flexible. Teachers involved in art integration are more likely to participate in professional development and acquire a broader repertoire of teaching strategies. And now, coming back to Artinet, this was a bit of introduction to, um, to understand why arts, in very brief, very briefly and uh, with very uh, short uh, uh, sentences, it's why arts are important and how are we using them in Artinet, in the project. As we said at the beginning, we are preparing methodologies. We have already prepared several documents, which are documents to explore how to use music to teach any school subject, to teach history, to teach mathematics, to teach any curricular subject, and how to use creative writing, drama, in the daily teaching. These are documents that will be available on the website as an open resource for you to see them and possibly to use them. Then we're preparing an in-service in teacher training course. The in-service teacher training course is a five-day course where you can uh, apply for a receipt to receive funds for the travel, for the subsistence, accommodation and for uh, the fee, the tuition fee, you can ask to your national you can ask your national agency to receive the funds and you can come to a five day course. We have two sessions during the project. One is in Spain and one is in Italy uh, towards May. So you will be informed uh, about how to um, to prepare your application. It's not a long application, it's quite easy. You can just write the why you're interested and several other information and you may receive the, fund, the funds to come, which is very good actually. It, the course is included in the Grundvik Comenius catalog of the European Commission. And our colleagues are including the link that you can see in the chat on how to reach this catalog and uh, write your application to come. Then before, uh, before uh, having the Lean Service Teacher Training course, what we did is to prepare um, an example, a sample course. To give an example, well, to experiment ourselves first and to give you an example to see how we have been using it during the, the project. So we prepared a sample course for uh, primary schools, which is now being piloted. As you can see, our image is very much green. And this, there is a reason for that, because the piloting is based on, uh, on one uh, subject. We are teaching one subject, one curricular subject, uh, through the arts. And this is environmental education. Why, we, why did we choose environmental education as a sample course for Artinet? Actually, we chose uh, um, environmental education for two reasons. The first is that uh, um, it's a cross-curricular subject. In fact, in uh, edu environmental education, we have uh, physics, we have biology, um, chemistry, we have many subjects, so it's really cross-curricular. Second point is that it is needed. Uh, an education, an, an environmental education now in our school system is very much needed. 
and uh, uh, the more we do on that, the better, because uh, uh, we need to create uh, new, uh, new citizens um, who understand the value of their own planet and their own resources. So uh, this was the choice, and we are uh, teaching um, curricula. Well, we're teaching environmental education based on five main um, main subjects. One is wind, water, sun, soil, and air. The piloting is focusing on, especially on water and on soil. The song that you heard at the beginning was in fact a song on water cycle, but you will, uh, you will find the song on the project website as an open resource, and you will see also the lyrics, and you can use it because it will be, uh, it will be for you basically, it will be open. And this is something that teachers created with children, but is created by children, basically. They did the work, they, they had the idea, they even created the melodies, they were just helped. We are piloting now, and the piloting is in two phases. The first phase is about creating productions. So we thought that we are six countries participating in the project with six organizations. So each one was focusing on a specific art form accordingly to expertise. So the mosaic art and sound, which I represent, is involved in music, and we're creating the music about wind, well, about water and soil. And then uh, in uh, in Romania, um, Dino Lupatti uh, High School in visual arts, they're creating production in visual arts based on the same subject. And then Vixio Force Ballet in Sweden is producing dance choreography on that with children in the piloting. And then we have the coordinator, uh, the coordinating institution, uh, Fondazione Nazionale Carlo Collodi in Italy, who is focusing on creative writing, literature, creative writing and storytelling. So we have already completed the first part of the piloting and we have exchanged our production to the Project Wiki. And then now children uh, in all these schools will have the production of their peers and they will create a final performance for the community in the school. They will create a performance with dance, with music, with songs, with the storytelling and visual arts about environmental education. And the community will, will attend, so teachers, head teacher, um, authorities, the whole community, which is a, an event at the end, the final performance, which is also important from a pedagogic point of view because, uh, um, because delivering a performance is something for, for children to be involved in and it's something that gives them satisfaction to have an audience and to show what they have learned and to teach it. So that is the final thing we're doing and then Joel will, uh, will tell you more on how you can get involved but we'll see this in a few minutes. So something about the pilot thing. So you can see a wonderful, uh, wonderful, really wonderful um, drawing made in the UK. Actually, this one uh, about water, and this is from Susanna from Poplar School in uh, in London. And then we have here. You can see the creative writing. So we have from from Italy in schools in Italy children. Uh, who are just creating a story of a drop of water. And the story of the drop is very interesting. You should see on the website what it is about. And then here we have dance. Fine. So this is from Sweden. Sweden is involved in dance. And you can see here children. Um, well, I don't tell you what they're doing. So you may, you may guess. Try to guess, what is this photo with, uh, with the legs here, with all these legs and hands? What, what can it be? Or what do you think? What it is? <laughs> do you have any idea? Do you think it's just socks? Someone can say wet socks, but no. 
<laughs> even if they're in Sweden, they're not wet. <laughs> so, uh, no, no one try. I'll tell you what it is. Okay, this is a snowflake. How did you guess it? It's so clear that it's a snowflake. Then we have rain. Remember, this is the water cycle. So the, the water that becomes vapor, and then it becomes liquid, and then solid. So you have all these passages to a dance choreography. And this is children in the UK in popular school again, and they are just dancing and, and rehearsing and jumping and embracing and doing everything, actually. <laughs> they're very nice and they, they're very creative. And this is now to have just an idea on how you can get involved in the project. As I mentioned already in service training course, which is a great experience because it's five days we can be together and we can see in depth many, many subjects and practices especially. And one important aspect I would like just to briefly mention is uh, that teachers need to be confident in using the arts. Because we in the West, well, it's, a, it's quite a Western concept, very much so, that only trained people can use arts and can be artistic. Only those who have a music training can, be, can use music in school. That's not true. That's absolutely not true. We don't need to, be, uh, we don't need to have a, 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 a music training to use music with children. We just need to have our enthusiasm for music. They don't expect their teacher to be a professional singer, to be perfect. They know that he's a teacher, so they don't expect what we would expect from ourselves. We need to be very, uh, very free from from these uh, uh, from these ideas that only those with training can do arts in the school. And this service training is also useful for this to give you confidence. And then there are other, other ways, if you cannot attend five-day course, you can always have a workshop online, but there are other ways that Joel maybe would like to introduce more properly. <laughs> yes? Okay, thank you very much, Therese. We decided before I was going to talk, I was going to let the, the, the children come and do some talking for us first. So, I'm going to play another little video. What's in store? What's in store? soil was very clear, isn't it? <laughs> They're lovely. They're really lovely. Okay, well, uh, yeah. 
Okay, can you hear me? Teresa, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, yes. Well, I, I don't think there's very much I can say after that. I think uh, the kids actually say it so much better than any of us can say it. You know, the, the, these are kids who are having a great time. And they'll remember the song and they'll remember what they sang about. And it's there and it's learnt. It is a great way of learning. Um, so really, what we're doing now is, we're, we're, as Therese has said, we're already in the piloting stage where we're testing out some of the ideas we have to see if they work, to see what does work, to see what doesn't work. Um, after that, we'll finalize our resources and our documentation, and we'll be opening it up for piloting across the whole of Europe. Now, what we've actually done, because we like to try and know what everybody's doing, we, we've made um, a sign-up form, and there's a link to it. It's on Box. And you can just download that, uh, put in your details about yourself and your school, and just send that to me. Uh, it, my email is in, in that form. And um, speak, speak louder, they say. And um, then when the resources are all ready, we'll send an email to everybody letting you know that they're ready and what, what you need to do, all the documentation will be there. So, uh, and, and then the other areas that, of course, you can get involved in apart from piloting is attending the workshops that we'll be doing and the in-service training that Teresa has already spoken nicely about. So I'm not going to speak about it again. Um, one thing we didn't mention, and I think we ought to here, I'm not going to show it, uh, take a chance on losing it, is we've actually got a project wiki. And on this wiki space, all the schools that are taking part in the project and uh, are actually putting up the videos, uh, the, document, the documents, uh, images, etc., of the work that the children are doing. For example, those videos we've seen tonight are also on the wiki as well. Each school is going to have its own page. Uh, obviously, at the moment, there's only the uh, few schools that are involved in the piloting. But what we'll actually be doing is um, all the schools that do want to take part and send in the sign-up form and, uh, and actually start working on the project, we will actually, uh, you'll ask, ask us, and we'll actually make a page for you on that wiki so we can all share and show what we've all been doing and make this into a resource of uh, ideas and results uh, for everybody. Um, what else am I going to say? I think that's it, isn't it? Questions? Yes. Anybody got any questions apart from, about, apart from the snowflake? <laughs> Can you please type your questions <laughs> into, the, uh, into the question box? I see Gail is typing. We'll just hang on. Um, oh, did, did Teresa say where she's actually living? Did you, did you say, Teresa? Where I am now. Where I am now, I'm in yeah. Cyprus now. And I'll be, I'll be here for a few weeks. Ah. And in the morning, we had sunshine. Okay. <laughs> Still sunshine. Okay. Wonderful. I do love it, actually. I do love it. It gives optimism and good mood all the time. Okay. So uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, Teresa. Um, how long? How soon do you yes, think the materials can, will be available? So the materials will be available. Well, some materials will be available next week on the website. And this is about, for instance, a repository, which I didn't mention. This is one of the project products. It's a repository of articles, academic studies, um, EU projects, um, website web resources, available on the subject of teaching curricular subjects through the arts. So it's a very specific repository. And it's about 100 pages. It's very interesting um, for those who are interested in the subject. And it will be uploaded on the website next week. Next week also will be available the methodologies, uh, which are background documents that we prepared on each art form that we are um, using in the project, which are music, creative writing, dance, visual arts, and drama. 
So there will be uh, this uh, available on the website. And then very soon uh, you will see the result of the piloting. Uh, actually tomorrow uh, we have the final performance in the UK because in London we started uh, um, well, quite a while ago and we have all the production ready. We exchanged the production with the partners and the final performance with the, the school and the community will be, uh, will be um, done tomorrow, actually. So soon you will have also some video of the final performances on environmental education. And then um, there will be also the program uh, of, of Dean Service Training listed in, uh, in um, in the project website soon. Okay. Um, there, there's another question here from, from Tini. Uh, does Artinet involve only class curriculum or can it be used for adults too? And I, I, I'll actually answer this. I, I think what we're doing here obviously is very experimental in, in one way. It's very needed. And I think it's needed at every level of education. Uh, because we, we so need creativity and the arts uh, within our thinking because of the way and the dynamic society that we actually live in. Uh, you know, just learning knowledge, just hard facts, will not suit us into this future that we don't even know. Uh, it, it's not the way we, we, we can do it. Within the limitations of this particular project, obviously we focused on primary, as you can see. But I think, you know, some of the ideas we have, and I think, this is very much why we like doing these webinars, is you know because we can engage with a very broad range of educators. And I think you know for me it would be great if somebody in adult education or somebody in secondary education also looked at what we're doing and then saw how that could be adapted into other levels of education, and then to have that feedback from you into our wiki community would be fantastic. You know, and, and this is, I think, the way, in a sense, from the grassroots, we can build up some nice and interesting uh, ideas that can develop further. Sorry, go on, Teresa. You, you wanted to say something. I, I, can add, I can add also something about this. Um, it's a very interesting question. Um, we are, um, well, the Mosaic Art and Sound is participating in uh, another European project, a Grundvig project, so for adults. And uh, this is about uh, using music and other creative languages for intergenerational dialogue. So we have, for instance, a, a module in this project called ELICE, A-L-I-C-E. Um, and in this module is about using music in adult-child interplay. So basically, how to have a different, a new kind, a creative kind of relationship between elderly people and teenagers, between parents and children and children. So it's uh, about using uh, the arts for uh, communication, because basically arts are communication is the is the, the, the most uh, valuable and highest sense of communication using the arts music has uh, it, it's the communication of contents meanings thoughts feelings so we can uh, we can communicate intents everything through the um, arts christiana I, i'm i'm going to yeah Therese, I'm going to move on uh, before it, I lose it off the page. Uh, I did lose it off the page. Christiana's asking, um, it, it's, she'd be interested in reading about drama techniques and language learning. Uh, I think some of the repository information we have covers that sort of area, doesn't it, Therese? Is that right? It does. It does. Uh, drama it does. and language learning. There are several information. There are several information on, uh, on, on this subject in the repository. And some academic studies, I think, we have included about the subject. Right. Um, how are we doing for time? In Italy, uh, I have tried. Of questions. If we got them. Yeah. There's um, a question from Anita. 
Uh, more precisely, I wanted to ask whether a private language school can apply for piloting. Um, a private language school yes. can do the piloting autonomously, but teachers can apply for funds to come to the in-service training. It's not the school, basically, that asks yeah. for the fund, it's individual teachers. Individual teachers interested in the subject, they can apply for funds to come to the, um, to the in-service in service training course. But in the school, you can, obviously, you can pilot, you can experiment autonomously. Teresa, I'm, I'm just going to pop in the, um, the sign-up form again, um, just to make that very clear for everybody so they can find it. And, uh, and then there's Gail. Very specific questions? Or? There's Gail, who is asking music, dance, you. photography, painting, sculpt <clears throat> sorry, sculpture, all included. Yeah, well, yes, yes. All included. All included. Photography uh, is part of the visual arts and is included, but uh, the piloting is not including photography this time. It's including video, though. <laughs> uh, but yes, all arts yeah. are included. Okay, uh, Guliana, the the training will actually be conducted in English Juliana. because we have to have a language that you know. Yeah. I, yeah. It's in English. Um, it's in English. And, the training the will be in English. The yeah, service. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and Dora, um, we don't know who's coming yet because the actual uh, in-service training was only just announced, I think, a couple of days ago. So uh, you, you would have to apply now, and theoretically, you know, people can come from all over Europe. All over the member states. Uh, yes, it's in the Grumbig training base. Yeah, it's in the Grumbig. Yes, it's in, it's in the uh, Comenius. It's the same. Yeah. It's, it's the same catalog, but it's in the Comenius section. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Belgian. Uh, yes, Bel of course. Belgian. I hope I said it right. Uh, <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. <laughs> All right. Any, any, there's lots of questions here. Everyone's doing right. It's great. Lovely. Let's wait for those. Asking, they're asking if we can upload the links on the Facebook. Yes, we can. Definitely. Yeah, some, yeah, some of them are there already, uh, Maria. And what I'll do is I'll put some... Um, I think the only one's missing... Uh, I, I certainly don't have the um, uh, I certainly don't have the link to the in-service training yet because that came up last. If somebody can just who does have that link can just pop it into the chat on the um, on the Facebook. I can't post the Facebook into here. Cynthia, maybe. Yes, I can. I have got it here. Yeah, I'll just. Uh, hang Cynthia on. maybe has just the link. link Cynthia maybe has the link available. Uh, oh, that's that great. Gunsely is okay. right, saying so that she will disseminate the events on the website. That's great. Thank you. Wonderful. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, I've just put the link into the event page on Facebook. Uh, let me just put uh, uh, in-service training. Course that. Okay. So it is that that's now a been suggestion added to for a the book on that page. And we'll also add that. Yep. Yeah. Hang, hang on, Teresa. And uh, we'll also be adding that link into the Facebook page of the project as well, and also onto the website. So we'll, we'll put we'll share that everywhere we can. Sorry, sorry, Teresa. Carry on. Sorry. Uh, okay. Okay, yes, it's important to have the title, but um, the link, when, when we give you, when you have the link, the, the precise link, 
um, when you click on it, you will enter directly into the course, into the description of the course in the catalog. So you, you don't have to type the, the title, everything. It's just using the link and it's straight into the course. I think Cinzia is just uploaded. Um, there's, there's the link there. You can see Cinzia uploaded the link for, uh, for the in-service training. Here again, here it is. Here is the link. You see Europa EU Education Training Database Search, and then uh, uh, all the other elements correspond to the, the, the in-service training, the Artinet in-service training. But Lisibo uh, is saying that the link doesn't take to specific course. Yes. All right, we'll, we'll check that out and we'll put it up onto the, uh, onto the web properties uh, later. We'll, we'll make sure it's the right thing. Meanwhile, I, I have to say, we will send all this. Uh, Teresa, Teresa, let, let me finish, please. Um, uh, we, we, we will send out all the information to everybody who completes the sign up form uh, because then we'll have your email address and we'll make sure that you, you get all this information directly to your email as well. Okay? That That's way we better. can be certain that, that, that we'll be able to give it to you. Yeah. yeah. So there won't be anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I think we should uh, wrap up, Teresa. Yeah? Yes. 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 I think it's quite, it's quite time. It has been very nice um, uh, having this webinar with you. You have been great attendees, I have to say. So thank you very much for your interest in Artinet, and I hope we can cooperate soon on uh, on it, on this idea, on this project, and many others. So I really hope to keep in touch, and I thank you very much for your attention on the subject. Thank you. Okay, and <laughs> thank you, Teresa. I think you did a really good job tonight, and uh, thank you to everybody for coming. And uh, I'm going to uh, close the recording now.